If we're running our own magazine, we can do anything we want. We can publish knock-knock jokes. Over in Ireland, that's like National Lampoon was not nearly as big a deal. I've got friends who were into National Lampoon movies, but like the magazine, I didn't know there was a magazine. I didn't really know about the radio hour. I knew all the people who'd come out of it, or a lot of people who'd come out of it, but I didn't know anything about it. What are you doing? Don't worry, I don't think there's any bolts in there. The iconic thing of the gun to the dog is just, it's so weird, and the dog looks genuinely scared, which I don't think you'd be allowed to do now. I like that. I mean, that cover is just like, amazing. I do like Minnie Mouse with the pasties. Mm. I think that's pretty strong. She has pasties on. The National Lampoon magazine, you know, even though it was, you know, slightly pornographic, was definitely taking on, um, was taking on a lot of kind of uh, subject matter that America wasn't used to seeing and that was very kind of like shocking. It's a total failure. We're selling less than half our print run. I wasn't familiar with it either, really, because I always thought it was like, it was a little closer to like heavy metal music. Like it was, some of the stuff gets, in National Lampoon gets very weird. Uh, considering that it was a popular thing. I mean, it's like, they, they, went, they went into some dark, weirds. We had, when we first sat down for rehearsals for the movie, uh, David and the writers brought in a stack of like a hundred issues. And they run the gamut from like stuff that's like incredible and groundbreaking, groundbreaking and interesting to just like, what the, what is this? It was. It was some trippy stuff in there. Doug Kenny, Chagrin Falls, Ohio. One of the writers of Animal House. Food fight!